Hi guys, it is an absolutely nasty, brutal, freezing, depressing, yuck Saturday morning here in the end times in South Austin, Texas. And you're all clueless moron. Doomsday optimist has to get to work, get out of here and get her done selling Christmas trees to clueless morons for the Austin Optimist Club here on this nasty Saturday morning, November 28th, 2015. But before I head out, I just going through the mainstream media here on Saturday morning to bring you my weekly clueless moron roundup rant. Can't think of a better day for that. Alright, and, and, and guys, this first story, the, the first sentence of the first story is one of the all-time great sentences I have ever found in the mainstream media. It ties together, sums up, and connects the dots of pretty much everything I've been trying to say on Humpty Dumpty Tribe for four years in one sentence. And this was under this article from the French News Service called Parched, Famished, Niger, Hard Hit by Climate Change. And here is, <laughs> here, here is the sentence. When yet another drought wiped out his flock five years ago, Poro, a Fulani shepherd in Niger, decided to migrate to the, to the capital Niamey, where he found work selling cell phones instead. There, there, there you go. Uh, now that, that is, is making lemonade out of lemons in sub-Saharan Africa. When drought kills your goats, move to the city and sell cell phones to clueless morons. And it's probably stories like that for the reason we have this story about one of the, the planet's clueless morons. That would be Pope Francis as Pope hails Africa as continent of hope. There you go. Pope Francis hailed Africa as, quote, a continent of hope on Friday as he toured Uganda on the second leg of a landmark trip. Yes, the 78-year-old pontiff was given a rapturous welcome Blah, blah, blah. Okay. In his opening speech, Francis said his visit was meant to draw attention to Africa as a whole, its promise, its hopes, its struggles, and its achievements. Quote, The world looks to Africa as the continent of hope. There you go. A picture of the continent of hope. The, uh, the world spokesman for breeders being mobbed by about, looks to me like about 700 people under the age of four. Yes, the continent of hope. But, uh... The, the continent of Africa is not the only one of the continent of clueless morons taking down a planet. Let's go over here to the continent of Asia, particularly the country of Japan. Japan to resume whaling in the Antarctic despite International Whaling Commission ruling. 
Japan has decided to resume whaling in the Antarctic Ocean by the end of March after a hiatus since last year, a move likely to prompt international outrage. The International Court of Justice ruled last year that Japan's decades-old whale hunt in the Antarctic should stop, so I guess they laid off for a year, but this year they're looking to assassinate 333 mink whales. And some guy uh, calling himself Hambone Littletail commenting on this story, Am I the only person on the planet disappointed that the Fukushima tidal wave did not take out that entire country of planet eaters? Yes, how about this one with 12 thumbs up? How about a multinational force to sink whaling vessels? Yes, I think that would be an excellent use of the UN to sink whaling vessels and go get all the commercial fishing vessels while you're at it. All right, what is going on over there on the eve of COP21? COP21 being those unadulterated horseshit climate talks. You see this one. Governments take rose-tinted view of climate projections before a summit. Yeah, right. <clears throat> before a summit on climate change in Paris, many governments are citing scientific studies indicating that their plans to curb greenhouse gas emissions until 2030 will come within 0.7 degrees Celsius of an agreed 2 degrees Celsius target for limiting global warming this century. So, so you got to understand already that now since they're missing the target, they're, they're fully admitting that there's no way in hell they're going to hit this bullshit target, uh, that the, the most optimistic scenario is still enough to fry the planet. They're bragging. They're bragging about how well they are doing. Yet, the studies they choose to quote are only the most optimistic of a range of projections and presume that governments will go on to make even deeper emission cuts after 2030, which is far from certain. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I will say that. And kind of in line with that story, we have uh, here in our own country, conservatives at odds with Obama and science on climate. This is a picture of mountaintop removal coal mining, uh, I believe, in West Virginia. If you think this is a scene from, I don't know, Brazil, this is your own country. And there's the Republican-dominated uh, coal-producing states. This is what the Republican Party would like to see the United States turn into. There you go. All right. U.S. conservatives backed by the powerful gas and coal lobbies are at loggerheads with the scientific world on the environment. Among them are several, several Republican White House contenders who deny or downplay the impact of humans on global warming and reject efforts to reduce greenhouse gases, saying it could hurt the economy. Yes, and those White House contenders are joined in Congress 
by Republican chairman of key science-related panels, including Alex Jones's big hero. Whenever Alex Jones is doing a story on climate change, he's always quoting his hero, Senator Jim Inafe, an arch-conservative who heads the Environment and Public Works Committee and for whom climate change is, quote, the greatest hoax ever perpetrated. Yes. Uh, I guess I, I, I should have done this story as my segue from uh, sub-Saharan Africa into Asia before I started talking about Japan killing those whales. This is the third time this week I have mentioned the clueless morons in South Africa. <clears throat> As we see, South African judge lifts domestic ban on rhino horn trade. So, so understand what we're saying here, guys. The only thing this law does is lift the ban on rhino horn trade inside the country of South Africa where there is no domestic rhino horn trade. That virtually 100% of rhino horn from all these butchered rhinos goes on to the international market. Anyway, for one more time, a South African judge on Thursday lifted a domestic ban on trade in rhino horns, alarming conservationists who described it as an extremely dangerous move that could worsen the rhino poaching crisis. That, that is exactly, uh, exactly what it's going to do. Jesus. Uh, okay, let's take a couple of stories from the police state. Uh, well, no, this one isn't from the police state. This is just what police are saying. What is going on in a Mississippi Waffle House? Uh, you, you, you know, the I, I don't know if, if you're familiar with Waffle House. That Waffle House in the South is this, is this awful little greasy, all-night greasy spoon cafe called, we call it the Awful House, uh, is what it's referred to as the Awful House. It is just a repository of the most, the most egregious examples uh, of just, just trailer trash. You know, just absolutely, hopelessly redneck trailer trash and drunks and, and just the outcasts of southern rural society. And uh, th then, of course, you have the state of Mississippi in here and, uh, and smokers tying all the dots together. As we see the headline from AP... Police say man in Mississippi Waffle House kills employee. <clears throat> a customer pulled out a gun and shot and killed an employee at a Waffle House in Mississippi on Friday after she asked him not to smoke. Police received a call about the shooting at 1.11 a.m., Yes, the customer, Johnny Max Mount, had argued with an employee after being told that he could not smoke. Quote, he pulled out a handgun and shot her in the head. They said, been charged with first degree murder. There you go. The Waffle House restaurant in Biloxi has a non-smoking policy. Yes. 
There you go. So now what is going on uh, in the police state? Well, that's <laughs> that blank screen is what's going on. Here we go. Cops respond to calls of men shouting, die, die, to discover he is trying to kill a spider. Authorities thought they were responding to a case of domestic abuse after neighbors reported a woman screaming hysterically and a man shouting, die, die. Instead, they arrived to find a man trying to, skill, to kill a spider. Yes, uh, the woman, I guess, screaming. The woman was screaming and the man was shouting, I am going to kill you. There you go. Uh, according to the uh, police report, I really, really hate spiders. Okay, now of course, yesterday was Black Friday, and uh, I just didn't have time, so we did, I, I just, good God, guys, uh, I had my choice, uh, I, I just picked this one. Okay, one of, one of probably a dozen stories. Here we have Amazon's top Black Friday deals of the day. Huge high definition TVs, drones, streaming sticks, and more. One of the top 100 stories on the planet on Black Friday. Okay, let's see. What have we got here? We have the 55 inch ultra high def smart TV for $900 but the 49 inch you can save $100 you can get your 49 inch TV for 800 but if you are a a a true clueless moron uh, you will not be happy. No, wait a minute. No, this is another 55-inch TV for 900. Where is the one I wanted to? Uh... Here it is for the for the ultimate clueless moron on your shopping list. I would recommend the Samsung curved 65-inch high def smart TV for a cool $1,500 for that one uh, we have a cleaning robot a cleaning robot doesn't say what the price is of course one of the big one one of the major uh, Christmas gifts uh, this year would be the drone I don't know how many hundreds of models of drones are being offered on Amazon. I have no clue what an Amazon Echo is. No clue. It costs you $150 for an Amazon Echo. And finally, at least in this one ad, an Amazon Fire TV Stick. The most powerful streaming stick. Again, I have zero clue what a st streaming stick is. No clue. Never heard the term streaming stick in my life until yesterday. And finally, I guess the Clueless Moron of the Week award goes to one Kelly Farrow. I guess this is a female Kelly. I'm not sure. Can't make this shit up, guys. This is from Yahoo Travel. Yahoo Travel. My vacation inside the Mall of America. Okay. 
<clears throat> Does three straight days in a mall sound like fun or torture? I wasn't sure which way it would go until I did it myself. So I spent 72 hours living inside the Mall of America in Bloomington, Minnesota, the largest shopping and entertainment complex in the Western Hemisphere, never once, never once venturing outside for even a breath of fresh air. And guess what? I had a blast! Besides the obvious incredible shopping literally at your doorstep, the Mall of America has a slew of restaurants, an aquarium with sharks, movie theater, a theme park, and even a track. With all these options, each day was different, and I enjoyed not having to worry <coughs> about the outside world for a while. Plus, all that power walking to shops burned off a lot of calories. I bet you never knew a mall vacation could be so glamorous. And there you go. Uh, and I might have to uh, go over to the 20 most drop-dead gorgeous lawyers in America. Reminds me of my cousin. She was fired from her job uh, as a lawyer, you know, she spent all these years in law school and shit. I mean, absolutely stone cold fox, my cousin Anne. So she got her first job immediately out of law school and was fired for being too good looking that people could not take it seriously that a gorgeous blue-eyed blonde with a southern accent uh, could have a brain. So there you go. Uh, but anyway, guys, you're all clueless moron. Doomsday Optimus has to wrap up his clueless moron roundup rant and get to the Optimus Christmas tree lot where I have been promoted to the weekend manager. So I better wrap up this edition of my Clueless Moron Roundup rant and head out into the Arctic blast of Austin, Texas to sell Christmas trees to Clueless Morons. Bye, guys.